is better when we celebrate together. Now lease an adventure ready Tacoma for just $269 a month. Or buy a Tundra. Now up to 1000 cash back from Toyota. Plus two years of no cost maintenance is included. Toyota, let's go places. First at 11 o'clock, our first real shot of winter weather, brutal cold on the way. And when you wake up, maybe some snowflakes blowing around. Yeah, so when does this Arctic air arrive and what do we need to know for the morning commute? We start our Stormwatch team coverage now with meteorologist Steve Rudin. Hi, Steve, what's the latest? All right, that cold front is just on our back doorstep. It arrives during the overnight hours and the first thing that you're going to notice is you're probably going to hear the wind begin to kick up around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Temperatures out there right now, we can deal with this. This is easy. Lower 40s inside the Capitol Beltway, and we even have a few snow showers northeast of Baltimore, but really nothing around the immediate metro area. If you do see a few flakes, it's not going to amount to a whole lot, but the bigger story, it's going to be those wind chill factors by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. This is the reason why you need a thick coat, gloves, scarf, a hat, the works. Feels like temperatures around 8 degrees, even colder north and west, and it stays cold pretty much all day long with wind chill factors below zero for Hagerstown, Winchester, and Luray as they move through the later afternoon hours. We're going to go hour by hour for the wind chills coming up in just a few minutes, plus looking ahead to the upcoming weekend, yet another chance for a wintry mix come early, early Saturday morning and looking ahead to Christmas travel as we move closer to the big Christmas weekend next week. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Well, looking ahead to tomorrow morning first, area school systems will have workers up long before the sun to make sure that school buses will be on time. You know, in past years, we have seen problems with buses running and staying on time in this kind of weather. So they spent the afternoon checking batteries, making sure buses are using winterized diesel. Officials will be up early to keep things running smoothly. And for up to the minute traffic and weather reports, you can tune into Good Morning Washington tomorrow starting at 425 in the morning and as always stay connected with the Stormwatch 7 team when you're not in front of your TV you can follow us on Facebook Twitter WJLA.com the website also download the Stormwatch app for any updates right there at your fingertips a seven on your side consumer alert now and Yahoo says it believes hackers stole data from more than one billion user accounts. Now this happened more than three years ago. The company says names, email addresses, phone numbers, all may have been stolen back then, but not credit card data. Now this is a separate uh, breach that was announced back in September. That time, 500 million accounts were exposed. Well, this was a scene tonight. More than 100 people marching down Pennsylvania Avenue right toward the Trump Hotel. The demonstration was organized by a group of Jewish people protesting a Hanukkah party. <clears throat> Annalisa Gale is here to explain why. Annalisa? Jonathan, as you know, there have been several protests in front of the Trump International Hotel in recent weeks, and this was yet another one. Weeks ahead of Inauguration Day, police had to monitor the protesters as they, as they marched throughout the city from here to Freedom Plaza. Oh. Dozens of protesters took to the streets to denounce an exclusive event at the Trump Hotel on Wednesday evening. Organizers say they are upset with the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations for hosting a Hanukkah party at the business owned by the president-elect. The organization, if not now, is behind the protest. We were sending the message that COP, the Conference of Presidents of Major Jewish Organizations, is not representing the majority of Jewish people in America. The Conference of Presidents is listed as an organization representing 50 national Jewish organizations on issues of national and international concern. On their website, they issued a press release on November 9th. The statement from the executive vice chairman and the CEO says in part, we congratulate President-elect Trump on his election victory and welcome his clear commitment to be a president for all Americans and to bind the wounds of division. It went on to say we look forward to working with President-elect Trump and his advisors in the transition before his inauguration. What they're doing is terrible, divisive, uh, and it's causing a lot of harm. And is it only because they're in an establishment that has Trump's name on it? Well, they're economically supporting Trump tonight, and there's also a lot of symbolism around this. 
A spokesperson for the Trump International Hotel would not comment on the event that was held here. As for the Conference of Presidents, we reached out to them. At this time, we have not received a response. Live from the Trump International Hotel, Annalisa Gale, ABC 7 News. Annalisa, thanks. Well, there's a possible conflict of interest over Donald Trump's D.C. hotel. House Democrats, some of them, say that a federal agency told them that Trump has to sell his stake in the hotel. But that agency, the General Services Administration, says that it hasn't made a final decision in this case. Trump is renting the property from the federal government, and the contract does say, quote, no elected official of the government of the United States shall be admitted to any share or part of this lease, end quote. Stay tuned as this thing plays out. All right, now to the presidential transition.